Hello, this is Tegan Fusey, and welcome back to the review on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tim and TD, RW ongoing series, issue 145. And oh boy, this one is one which I don't know how to really feel about because, on one hand, I do like the things which they are setting up for the future for this little story arc and what they're trying to do for this one. But also at the same time, I do feel as though like not much really happened. It just feels as though like not much happened really. <laughs> Okay, so with this story, we do get to see some characters on the farm, and we do get to see Donnie, April, Venus, and they're all trying to set up this like device, basically making up a wormhole so they can go into the future or the past or something like that. Which I must admit, I do find it to be interesting, just because in most time travel stories, they don't normally get to see this type of thing. Where we do get to see them, like building devices to like go to the future, especially not with like wormholes and stuff like that. So I do find that to be like a really unique like concept of time travel. And I do like it, I wish I did a lot more of it, but I guess we'll wait and see because maybe they could do something more of it, but yeah, we'll wait and see about that. So then after that we do get to see everyone sleeping in the farmhouse, and this bit was okay, but then we do get to see future Bob, he comes into the house and then talks to his pr present self, or past self, I'm not too sure, I feel like this is going to get very confusing now. Uh, but either way, he talks to his past self, and so basically, you know, like, we're still a mutant in the future. However, if you stop the machine, you know, we can go back to normal. And with that, I don't know what to really say, because if he is a mutant in the future, why would he be so concerned about it and be like, yeah, like, I'm a future, like, and be like, yeah, I'm still a mutant in the future. I feel like Bob can see that, but also, I don't know why that's a big deal. Because Bob's never really like shown any concern that he wants to like show, like change back into a human or anything like that. So I do feel like this bit here was a little bit weird. And I do think that his motivations and stuff like that was a little bit weird. But yeah, I think that like they did like leave out quite a bit of like, Bob's um, motivation and stuff like that but, like behind. But I don't know. Yeah, it's alright. So then after that we do get to see Bob goes out to go and destroy the machine and that's when we do get to see Donatello and Venus, they wake up and go over to the machine and that's when they start to fight Bob and his future self and this bit here, I don't know what to really say because on one hand I do enjoy it because the, it's like action, it's fighting and I do enjoy that but also at the same time this feels to over this bit here felt like really rushed and really forced into it just like you know just going from one scene to the next because this bit here it felt really rushed because as so, like, soon as Donatello starts fighting Future Bob, they all immediately go straight into the portal, and that's pretty much it. And I do feel so like maybe they could have done more here, but at the same time, I don't know what they could have done differently. So, I do feel so like there was a lot more they could have done, but I'm not too sure what they could have done differently. <laughs> so then after that, we do get to see Donatello, Bob, and Venus. They go into the portal, and just want to go back in time to like 12 million years ago, and... We do get to see a Megadon, he's swimming around the ocean, stuff like that. And that's when we do get to see Megadon jumps up to bites the characters. And that's when they all get uh, like sucked into a portal to go to the future. Now this bit here, I do feel so that this was the weirdest bit for this scene here, or this whole issue. Just because this bit here felt really forced in. And I know that like, I, I wouldn't say that like, I had like a like, suspicion, basically Dante was going to crazy him. By the feeling that maybe they could have done something bad just because of Armagorn and his connection to Donatello, so I did have like a little feeling that something like this would happen. And now that it's actually happening, ah, uh, I wish I could say that I enjoyed it a lot more, but it just felt so anticlimactic and just so weird and forced in. I mean, it's just more the fact that just the characters show up, Megadon shows up and tries to kill them, and then all teleports away, and then Armagorn is created. It just feels like so weird and so forced in, and I feel like they could have done a better job at this. Um, I, I don't know because it just feels through like any animal could have been the like animal, but yet they went with the shark just because or coincidence and stuff like that. It does feel a bit weird and forced in, but other than that, it was alright, I guess. So then after that, we do get to see all the characters and the shark that go into the future, and we're supposed to be the f like the first point in the f in the future or something like that. So. I do find it to be weird, but like, you know, like this is the first point in the future. It does seem a bit weird because, you know, I feel like time will be f like forever and going on and on and on. But it seems like here, it just seems like everything is gone. So I do find that to be a little bit weird, but who knows? 
And we do get to see uh, the shark uh, mutating into Armagon, and I don't really understand how he's mutating with all machines and stuff like that, despite there being nothing there and stuff like that. Also, with this, it just brings up a few questions which I don't think Seth Campbell really thought about. Just because with this bit here, we do get to see Armagon uh, mutating because of the blast that Donatello gave with the like the corn DNA and stuff like that. However, in the Armageddon game stuff, Donatello did that to some Ultrons, and yet they all blew up and stuff like that. So I don't understand how that bit was different, and this bit is like completely different to the point where Armagon is like transforming into a mutant robot shark and double characters were just blown to bits. So. I do find it to be a little bit weird, but, you know, it's told at the end of the day, so, yeah, you can complain, really. <laughs> now, overall, for this issue, I do find this one to be an interesting one, because I do feel, too, that this whole issue was great for the most part, but I do feel, too, that there's a lot of bits in here, which I do feel that like they could have done a lot differently, and could have improved it quite a bit. And I do feel still like some bits did fall a bit weird and forced into some certain points of the comic. But other than that, it was pretty great. However, there was like some parts for this issue which I did get like a little bit excited for in terms of like, what they could be setting up for the future and stuff like that. And also like where they could be taking this whole story because like time travel, the future, other turtles, the future turtles and stuff like that. So I think that, like there's a lot of stuff in here which I am looking forward to what they have set up, and do think it could be really interesting and great. It just really depends on how they handle all of it and actually expand upon it and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, I think it, this is like a really promising start. Now, for the artwork, which was something which I was quite surprised that we do get to see the artist from the Armageddon game return. And yeah, this artist is so great. I really enjoyed their artwork, it was so great and amazing. And I'd just like to see this artist come back and do a lot more. And I'm quite interested to see what, what they do for the future for this story arc in terms of like the future tell stuff. I'm so curious to see what they could be doing. The artwork is so great and amazing. The one thing which I did find a little bit weird though was that most of the characters who were speaking, they didn't have their mouths open. And this seemed a little bit weird and I don't know what to do with that. So maybe this could be something which the artist could improve upon and work on. But other than that, the artwork was really great. I just wish... I wish the characters actually had their mouths open while speaking, but pretty great artwork. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below which you this issue does on, do you not? And uh, yeah, and that's it for today guys. If you're some, please share, let's just grab your stuff. Good, bye, yo, bye, yeah.